for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our first session with Brian Adams and welcome to our second session. It is connecting with candidates in relevant ways to drive applicant flow. And just as a reminder, go, oh, you can already see all those icons popping up. So Kristen and Brian, you can see everyone saying hello, welcome. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speakers today. I get the pleasure of working with Kristen and Brian and the Inspire brand. They will be talking to us about how they've created a multi-channel marketing strategy to combat hiring needs and also to attract candidates against this unprecedented recruitment market and the challenges that we're facing today. Uh, this is a subject I know we're all deeply interested in, and I think it flows very nicely from our first session because now more than ever, we want to excite candidates and we want to convert them into applicants and potentially hires. So presenting today, we have Kristen Ferguson and Brian Hocus. They're joining us from Inspire Brands. And that includes many restaurants you're probably familiar with. So Arby's, Baskin Robbins, Sonic, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Duncan. And you know, I'd love an emoji for anyone who had Duncan this morning or is maybe sipping on that right now. <laughs> yep. All right. So Kristen is the Senior Manager of Employer Brand and Recruitment Marketing, and she leads Employer Brand and Recruitment Marketing at Inspire Brands, and she and her team create and execute multi-channel recruitment marketing strategies to drive applicant flow. And Brian Hocus is the Senior Director of Talent Acquisition for Inspire Brands. He believes that innovative recruiting function provides a competitive advantage for any company in today's marketplace. So please join me in welcoming Kristen Ferguson and Brian Hocus. Thanks so much, Alyssa. Let me go ahead and share my screen so that we can get started here. Brian, I'll have you um, go ahead and go first. You can elaborate on Alyssa's intro. Yeah, just a quick uh, follow up to, to the intro. Thank you for that. Um, and I will warn you, we're dealing with a bit of weather here in uh, Minnesota, which is where I am based. Uh, so if you hear a clap of thunder or a flash of lightning over here, uh, I will try not to jump and uh, try not to let it distract me too much. Um, but uh, again, I'm the Senior Director uh, for Talent Acquisition at Inspire Brands. Uh, prior to Inspire Brands, I actually led the recruitment function for Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, so I'll share a little bit of our story in a minute about how Inspire Brands came to be. But uh, through my 20 year career, I've also spent some time at uh, brands that you know, uh, like US Bank, uh, Target, uh, and a few others as well as uh, spend some time on the uh, the search firm side of the business as well. Kristen, I'll let you introduce yourself before we dive in. Perfect. Um, so I'm Kristen Ferguson, and as Alyssa mentioned, I lead employer branding and recruitment marketing for Inspire Brands. Um, and actually, so I've been with Inspire Brands for about two years officially, but I started my career at Sonic. Um, so I have 13 years in the talent acquisition space, primarily focused on employer brand and recruitment marketing. And I will tell you, you know, and I'm sure most of you are the same way. In my 13 years, I have never seen a recruitment environment that has been as difficult as our current climate. Um, but I am also a very firm believer that if we can create these strategies and processes and adopt these practices now, um, with the current need that when we inevitably get back um, to good, right, on the other side of these unprecedented times, we are going to end up in a much better place than we were before 2020. So i um, really excited to, to be here with you guys today and share some of the things that we have been working on at Inspire Brands to help our restaurants overcome this difficult climate. Um, in the hopes that really it can maybe help spark some ideas with you and how you all can make some strides in your organizations as well. So uh, in terms of the agenda, I'm gonna turn over it over to Brian in just a second, and he's gonna kind of kick it off and give you just a brief overview of Inspire Brands. Um, so you know a little bit more about who we are and, and where we're coming from, as well as talking briefly about the current employment state, especially you know, through our lens. And then we're going to touch on, um, you know, a high level overview of our multi-channel recruitment marketing strategy and really share how we connect with candidates through various sources of influence. And then we're going to um, highlight the importance of the partnership that we have with brand marketing and uh, talk a little bit about how we gained some of that buy in. And then also how to kind of cultivate your employer brand and nurture the candidate experience. And then we're going to wrap it up with just a few best practices that we have found to be effective um, with our brand. So with that, I will turn it back over to you, Brian. 
Thank you, Kristen. And I think uh, just like Brian before us, I think we could probably talk about a lot of this for days and days, but uh, we'll try to condense a few best practices into, into 45 minutes and uh, hopefully have some good questions and uh, dialogue and, and some of the, uh, the discussion later. But just a quick uh, overview of who Inspire is. Uh, one of the things that, that we deal with uh, on the Inspire brand side of things specifically is many of you know our brands, not many of you know Inspire brands. Um, so from a recruitment and employer brand and marketing perspective, to try to tell the story of Inspire brands, while then also telling the story of, of all of our individual brands has been one of our biggest challenges. So back in 2018, uh, the Arby's brand acquired Buffalo Wild Wings, took Buffalo Wild Wings from public to private, and uh, in that process built Inspire brands. And since then, uh, we next acquired Sonic, and then Jimmy John's, and then most recently, uh, our Duncan and Baskin Robbins uh, acquisition. So as we've continued to do this, we've continued to build and layer in the capability to try to understand how do we build an employer brand for Inspire as an entity while also maintaining a, uh, a very distinct brand uh, identity for each of our, our restaurant brands. Um, so it's been a, a bit of a challenge to, to try to take this as we call it a one Inspire approach where we're leveraging a lot of the same tools, team, uh, support systems, but then also partnering with each individual brand uh, to really bring this to life. So you can see some of the stats. We've got uh, over 32,000 restaurants now, um, 3,200 plus franchisees. So we support directly uh, our corporate locations and indirectly uh, providing support for all of our franchisees as well. So um, a lot going on here and it continues to kind of build and grow and, and evolve, but we'll share a little bit of how we've approach that and how we've tackled uh, not only the resources that we provide, but also the partnership with each of the brands, as well as the, the Inspire uh, approach as a whole. So I won't belabor the point too much. Here's a few quotes, but uh, from a market perspective, you all are very well aware. I took a, a spin through some of the folks that are on here and I see a lot of you in either hospitality, retail, uh, or a similar industry, uh, they're probably experiencing all the same things. Um, you know, hourly restaurant employees uh, have uh, turned over at a higher rate than ever. Across our brands, we're seeing uh, roughly anywhere from 30 to 50% increases in our turnover numbers uh, on our hourly side. Uh, a little bit less than that, but, but still an increase on our management turnover. And uh, likewise, uh, a good bump in our support center turnover. There's just so many opportunities. Uh, the landscape is extremely competitive. Again, I'm not gonna belabor the point because I think you all uh, are very well aware and understand where we're, where we're coming from here. But I think also important to note that, you know, the, the, the climate that we're in right now and our opportunity in this climate uh, from a talent acquisition function perspective to really build and grow and uh, provide that business case right now, which may have been a little bit more difficult pre-COVID, I think is a much easier sell uh, and, and conversation right now because of the difficult times we're in. And we'll go through a little bit of that coming up, but I think important to note, now is a great opportunity to take advantage of uh, the difficulties that we're facing to now go and build either a, a bigger, broader, better employment brand plan or executing uh, a, a better and broader recruitment marketing strategy as well. Yeah, that's so true. So, you know, obviously, and, and Brian, as you mentioned, the current employment landscape that we're in, it really mandates that we place an emphasis on recruitment. There's just not a, a choice right now. And it really does take a diversified approach, right? Because long gone are the days when, you know, we can wait for candidates to come to us. We need to meet candidates where they are. We need to approach them with relevant content, um, and share these employment opportunities in meaningful ways. And so for Inspire Brands, what we have done is taken that multi-channel recruitment marketing strategy approach. And we've done that through on-premise, through job boards, and then through digital and social. So what I'd like to do is just dive a little bit deeper into each one of these three buckets and sort of share with you how we are executing that, that strategy. And I'll start with on-premise. So, you know, I realized that on premise, um, you know, it presents a great recruitment opportunity for restaurants. 
um, for retail, for hospitality, you know, for organizations that have, you know, kind of those physical locations. And I also recognize that some of you um, here today may not have that same setup. So just know that, um, you know, there will be some takeaways in here for you as well, even if you don't necessarily have that physical location. Um, you know, these are some of, of the on-premise materials that we have available for our Buffalo Wild Wings sports bars. Um, these are pretty specific to our company-owned locations, but we do have options for our franchisees as well. And, you know, looking at that slide, there's, there's a lot of stuff up there. Do we advocate that the sports bars utilize all of these materials at once? Certainly not. Um, but we do feel like it's really important to have that broad suite of tools available um, because that way, you know, it can ensure that there are viable options for the sports bars to choose from both for, you know, internal inside their sports bars, as well as external, regardless of any local restrictions or things like that. Now, something that we've discovered with the on-premise materials, and this may be, you know, specific to kind of the restaurant industry, but but particularly in this in, uh, employment landscape that we're in, we have found that our materials on premise need to be really straightforward. So they need to break through the clutter. They need to capture candidates attention really quickly um, and give a very clear call to action. And so you're going to see some of the pieces here. They are pretty um, you know, basic. There's the now hiring message. There's join our team. Um, and we've saved some of the ones that are more, you know, um, that share our employer brand, right? With our tag, game time, energy, lifetime experience. We've utilized that information and the information where it shares more about what it's like to work at Buffalo Wild Wings on the takeaways. So on the things like bag stuffers or on career pathing documents and things like that, that candidates actually take with them. Um, now, oh, Wrong side. Now, if your um, if your business you know doesn't have a physical location, right, or maybe you're more of a corporate environment that wouldn't necessarily advertise on premise, um, you know, a referral bonus program is a great option. This is something that um, we've implemented across Inspire Brands and all of our restaurant brands especially during this difficult time. And we've seen really great traction at the support center level um, and with our restaurant managers. And then of course, from a team member perspective, certainly we've seen it as well. But this is great because it can help with not only attracting new um, candidates, but also retaining existing employees because you know it's much more fun to do a job with a friend, right? And also because if you're passing out information, like maybe it's career pathing documents or um, benefits and perks that that have that your organization has, you can share that with your existing team members for them to pass out to their referrals. But it also serves a duplicate purpose because then you're reminding your existing team members of all of the things that you offer them as an employee of the company. Oops, guys, the slides today. Um, from a job board perspective, now obviously job boards are a much more traditional form of recruitment marketing than say, um, you know, digital or, or various social campaigns, but they are effective. And the reason that they are most effective is because you are targeting active job seekers and you're able to communicate with them on their preferred job board platform. So we utilize job boards and Inspire Brands in a number of different ways. So the first we take an always on approach. So we sponsor our company owned restaurants jobs on uh, snag a job every month. We have sponsored job postings. Now we use snag a job because um, you know, of all of our job boards, they drive the highest applicant flow for our um, hourly population for you all. You know, that may look very different depending on your employee population, but um, we definitely recommend identifying what the highest performing job boards are and then, you know, being proactive about your posting so that you can build that candidate pipeline. Now, we supplement our always on uh, strategy with ad hoc campaigns, right? So these are levers that we can pull for maybe some of our restaurants that are still having difficulty with applicant flow despite the always on campaign. So for us, that may look like an online hiring event. So maybe, um, you know, an Indeed hiring event or a snag a job featured employer. Um, maybe it's a campaign on job case or um, a zip apply campaign through ZipRecruiter. 
Now, if you have more of a salaried candidate population, that may look more like targeted LinkedIn ads, um, or maybe running a pay-per-click campaign on Indeed. So really just you know, identify those levers that are gonna work best for your roles with your population and then pull those levers as needed. Now, speaking of some of the pay-per-click campaigns or PPC campaigns, over the past couple of years, we have really moved to um, leverage programmatic advertising. And we do this through our recruitment marketing agency, but basically what they do is they push out our job postings across a broad network of publishers, and then they'll optimize the spend on the back end based on how the job is performing on these publishers. So, you know, this is a great way to get more bang for your buck, you know, because you're going to be spending the dollar amount anyway, you might as well see where it performs the best. And then it's going to give you information too, right? So you're going to see out of all of these job boards, where do your roles perform the best? And then you'll know that that's a job board where you may want to put some dollars later, maybe for your always on campaigns or for various PPC campaigns in the future. And then just quickly on app deficit. So app deficit has been a strategy um, that we've wanted to, to implement for a while now, but we've only recently been able to solidify the reporting structure to support it. Um, so we've been really excited kind of testing this out with a couple of our brands. But basically, um, once you identify your headcount needs, right, an app deficit strategy will really help you determine the average number of applications that you need for a hire. Um, and that's going to be based on the role, um, on the industry, on the location, and some other factors, including existing application flow. And then it will prioritize the positions as high priority, medium priority, or low priority based on how many applications you'll need to get that higher. And so then you can allocate the budget accordingly with obviously the highest budget placed toward the high priority locations and low or zero budget for the low priority locations. Now on premise and job boards obviously are you know, very important components of our overall strategy, but a strong digital and social recruitment presence is critical to meet candidates where they are. Um, you know, this is a look at some of the things that we've put in place for Arby's this year in this space uh, over the past 18 months. And so, you know, we really advocate having a career site that is easy to navigate. We want to make sure that it conveys your employer brand and, you know, the offerings, your EVP, the employee value proposition, and the offerings that you have with your organization. We want to make sure that it facilitates a really quick, streamlined application process as well. So we rolled out new career sites across all of our brands um, about two years ago and have been very pleased with the results. Leveraging AI with a chatbot. Um, we have these on all of our career sites and it's great because candidates can ask questions and uh, on ours, they can also apply through the chatbot. And so we have found that um, I personally was shocked at how many interactions we ended up seeing in that first year through our chatbot um, and thousands of applies. So um, definitely, if, if that is something that's available to you, look to implement that. Using a text uh, program for text apply. Now, this is great because, you know, it's a way that candidates want to be communicated with, right? So again, connecting with them through their preferred platforms. Now, our text apply um, actually integrates with our ATS. And so candidates can actually complete the entire application through text message. So that's been really fun for us to see the app flow that's come through our text apply program. But even if your text apply program, you know, if you're just able to put out some verbiage that aligns with your employer brand and include a link to your career site or a link to your rec to apply, um, that is certainly a win. The career arc jobs map has been really beneficial for us. So one of the things that we've learned is that candidates really like applying at their Sonic or at their Arby's. And it is really easy through the map for candidates to be able to zoom in, select their preferred location, see the available roles, and then apply right from there. So that's been a really big bonus um, as part of our career arc relationship. But I'll be honest, the reason we actually initially broached career arc is because we identified social recruiting as a really big gap in our overall digital strategy. 
And so it's been fantastic to be able to now have through Career Arc postings on Facebook and Twitter, um, because obviously that means that we have thousands more job postings out there, but it also enables us to share our employer brand um, on these social channels in an automated way, which is great. And then we've done some paid search and social as well. Um, admittedly, it is not our go-to first thing because it can be pricey and it's also targeting passive candidates. So conversion tends to be lower overall, but it's a really great way to build awareness of your company as an employer. Um, it's more of a long-term play in that way. And we found, you know, I think it can be particularly impactful if you have a strong consumer brand. Um, for us, you know, people typically think about Arby's as having fantastic roast beef sandwiches, right? But they don't necessarily make the association that, you know, hey, I could work there and make those awesome roast beef sandwiches. So, you know, utilizing social helps to build that brand awareness. Um, and it also boosts the brand recall. So they may see a social ad and then months later be looking for a job and have that brand recall of, hey, you know, I think Arby's might be hired. So definitely look for, um, for opportunities to leverage social. Now, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about owned channels um, and, and leveraging them because these are the channels that your brand marketing team has established to connect with customers. And these are important to recruitment for three major reasons. The first reason is that they come with a built-in audience. So your marketing team has spent a lot of money putting together these you know, consumer audiences. And so because of that, these channels are number two, very impactful because you're able to reach a lot of people who know about your brand and care about your brand. And because they are owned channels, that means that they are number three, free, at least to you, um, which is definitely something that, that we love. I know, um, you know, our, our recruitment marketing budget <clears throat> doesn't hold a candle to our brand marketing budget. And I'm sure all of you are in the same boat there. So, um, you know, here on the slide, you can see some of the ways that we've worked with Sonic to tap into, um, you know, these owned channels. And much of this is duplicatable. Um, so regardless of industry, these are things that you can do in your organizations. So communicate the employment opportunity through brand text. So you can see with Sonic, we did a, a multimedia text message with an image, but you could just do a regular SMS, just communicating a little bit of a, um, verbiage that aligns with your employer brand, a link to the career site, um, but tapping into that consumer audience through text apply. Because honestly, your customers can be a, a big potential applicant pool. So this is a great way to reach them. Adding recruitment messaging to your homepage on your brand career site. Or if you have multiple locations, um, you know, like restaurants or retail locations, adding the link to the career site and recruitment messaging on the location pages is a really good move. We did that for Sonic years ago. And when we, when we did that, the location pages on sonicdrivein.com became one of our highest sources of traffic to the career site. So definitely recommend that. And then I really want to highlight putting the careers button um, on the top navigation of the brand site. Um, I am consistently shocked at how often I go out to websites and have to look everywhere to just to find the career site link buried in the footer. Um, you know, obviously we want to make sure that our candidates can easily apply, right? We don't want any barriers. And so I will tell you, we Buffalo Wild Wings was one of those instances. Um, and it was only recently that we were able to add the careers tab to that top navigation. And you know how it happened? Brian and I had a meeting with Buffalo Wild Wings CEO or CMO, and we asked her to go to buffalowildwings.com and from there get to the career site. And she couldn't find the link. Um, because it was, it was buried. And, and so immediately she said, well, that's crazy. We need people. And it was done within two days. We had a link on the top navigation directly to career site. Um, and when we did that, so we monitored our traffic for the first two months after making that change. 
and the number of job seekers coming to the career site from buffalowildwings.com increased by 80%. And the apply clicks from those people coming from buffalowildwings.com to the career site, the apply clicks increased by 42%. So if there is one thing that you can figure out how to make happen, if you don't already have this, I would highly recommend getting that careers link on the top nav of your brand uh, site. Also, you could look to include recruitment messaging in your brand's consumer emails. I think this is something that used to be considered kind of taboo, right? Where it's like, oh, we don't want to tell our consumers that we need people to work in the stores. But now it is very common practice. Um, and so definitely recommend if you're able to slot something in on your brand's team's content calendar, definitely do that. Tap into your brand's social posts. So even if it's just organic, right, which we know is not going to get a lot of traction, but they're going to create content. Either the agency or your brand marketing team will create content um, that you probably didn't have to pay for, right? And so then you'll have these assets that you can utilize down the road on your own paid social posts or you know, utilizing them in other digital spaces. And then the last thing, if your brand happens to have any designated brand ambassadors that talk about product or, you know, experiences, talk with your marketing team about throwing some career related content into their, their content calendar. Now, I, I will say that most owned channels, they, they are valuable real estate, right? And they're typically reserved for sales driving initiatives. So marketing may be initially um, a little bit hesitant about letting you use them for recruitment, but we have done this a time or two. And so we have some tips um, to gain marketing leadership buy-in and Brian's going to talk you all through that now. Yeah. So, and there's a, actually a question I've been looking at some of the, the questions coming in that, that talks about asked about uh, the, the, detailed business case and how detailed and, and some of these kinds of things. I think the example Kristen gave of she and I meeting with the CMO for Buffalo Wild Wings and going through the example of, of the careers tab, we didn't come with necessarily a super detailed business case. We came with free and easy ways to, to improve, right? Typically, historically, Buffalo Wild Wings, the response was, that website is to drive sales and convert people into customers. Well, now that we're in the situation that we're in now, uh, it's it's much, much different. And the the ears and eyes have been opened a bit to uh, the necessity of, of doing some of these things. So at the beginning, we didn't even necessarily come with a, a detailed business case of, of here's why and here's what we're seeing and here's why you need to do this. It was as simple as look at how difficult this is. Look at the experience that candidates have. Can they even find it? You couldn't find it. And you know the website. Um, so find some of those those quick and easy wins, um, and then be able to, uh, to to tackle things from there. You know, start at the top is what we have here. CMO to the rescue. If if you can start with your most uh, senior uh, marketing person that you can get to. It might not be the CMO. You may be able to build a good relationship with the director of marketing, but whomever in that that organization you can get to to start that conversation and start to show some of those quick and easy wins. Free things are great to start with for marketing uh, and then present what that looks like. From there, you can build out that more detailed business case, right? We've got the wings won't make themselves. You could say roast beef. You could say uh, whatever you wanted with our brands. Um, but again, I think that business case right now is the time to tackle that because everyone is feeling the pinch of the sales are being impacted by the lack of staff, right? If we can't be open, uh, we can't open dining rooms, we can't be open late, uh, the business case uh, speaks for itself and is, is already there. That groundwork is laid for you. Now you need to come with what that looks like. Again, own channels are free. We can do some of these things completely free. Changing that careers tab, again, took a matter of, of days or hours with very minimal lift and effort and zero cost because it was our team that was managing the, the career set that needed to make the move. Track and report. We've been fortunate that we've, as we've built out our technology, both on our career site, uh, through our text platform, uh, we've been able to, to build some, some robust reporting. It doesn't need to be uh, every bit of detail to present, but find a couple of those KPIs that you can report back on, whether it's an increase in apply clicks, uh, an increase to your career site, uh, an increase in applicants and hires obviously are the uh, 
the gold standard there. But find some things that that can just show incremental growth. And it doesn't need to be this, oh, my God, it increased by 80 percent. But if you start to see incremental growth, that is going to, to, to point in the direction you want it to point. Uh, then your, your business case, again, starts to build on itself. And, and you need to be able to be ready with what do we have as a follow up and what do we want to do? Paid media. Again, it's expensive. Uh, it's much more difficult to get into. Uh, however, I love a pilot. So we've we've approached our brands with a lot of, of piloting, whether it's, hey, let's do one TikTok related to to careers. Uh, let's let's get one post out on Instagram talking about careers and see what kind of traffic we get. And the traffic you get when you talk about your people and career opportunities and showing real people uh, in the environment that they're going to be in, uh, marketing will be amazed at what kind of traffic you get from those stories and, and from those posts. So layer that in. Uh, again, it, it's a little bit more difficult to, to start with that, um, but bring that in uh, as, as kind of your next level. And it doesn't have to be a, a huge spend. It can be a, a specific market, uh, one post, something like that to start to be able to track, report and, and have those conversations. Yeah. And obviously, yeah, the, the last one, I'll, I'll touch on seize the day, but I've, I've mentioned this over and over. Um, what the, the obstacles we ran up against up until uh, over the last couple of years uh, would, the things we're doing now would have never happened a couple of years ago um, or would have been much more difficult to do um, from the, the brand presidents to our CEO to the CMOs, uh, people and staff is the number one priority. And if we're not taking advantage of that to be the experts, uh, come with those recommendations, uh, talk about the different things that we can do, whether it's going to cost us some money or not, uh, we need to be to be building that out and coming with, with every idea we can. We tell our team, no idea is a crazy idea right now. Um, we, we need to be coming up with as many different things as we can. You saw in some of the, the, the previous slides, you know, we went to a big, bold now hiring, right, um, for in our, our restaurants. We're starting to now come into, OK, we're going to bring back some of the more nuanced uh, EVP work within some of those pieces um, so that we can start to tell a better story. We're starting to do that a little bit on social right now. Um, but the more and more you can get after it right now, nothing off the table. Let's let's throw it all out there uh, and try, 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 pilot, pilot, pilot. Uh, that is where, where we're at right now. And, and we're able to try different things in different brands. We're in a pretty fortunate position to do that and then take from one brand and implement in another. Um, but if you're not trying everything you can think of, as crazy as it might sound, um, you're probably not doing uh, as well as you could be at this point. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways is, you know, nothing's off the table. So let's give it a go. Um, now, obviously, you know, there are so many touch points on your candidate journey. And so it's really important to make sure that your employer brand shines through. So, you know, all of these messages that you're communicating to candidates, are they in brand voice? Um, are you sharing all of the great things that your brand has to offer team members? Um, you know, are you leveraging your platforms to share employee stories? There are so many things that we need to be asking ourselves. But I think one of the first things that we need to address um, is employee value proposition or EVP. It really helps when you have a solid EVP to communicate to your candidates. Now, it is very likely that EVP creation probably falls outside of your jurisdiction. And if you are in talent acquisition or employer branding or recruitment marketing, I hope that it does because all of those things are very full jobs in and of themselves. But I will say as much as you can do to help support building a robust EVP for your organization, the easier it will make your job. Um, so just keep that in mind as those conversations are happening in your organization. Now, through our partnership with CareerArc, we have created a content calendar to really facilitate a regular cadence of posting uh, content on Glassdoor and LinkedIn and Indeed. And it, it, it's nice because it really allows us to share career focused content like um, team member stories or maybe community involvement efforts or highlighting, you know, exciting brand initiatives. We can share that, you know, with our candidate population. So definitely recommend that. 
Um, responding to reviews on sites like Glassdoor and Indeed, this is something that we've placed more of an increased emphasis on over the last year. Now, I will tell you, we are not all the way to Bright. There is definitely still work for us to do there, but we have gone in, we've established review response protocols for each of our brands to ensure that our responses align with our employer brand. Um, and the great thing about this is that, you know, these sites really help shape your employer brand because you've got candidates and current and former employees out there talking about what it's like to work at your organization. And this really allows you to participate in the conversation. Um, another way that we are connecting with our candidates to share our employer brand and opportunities is through our brand's talent communities. We have talent community pages set up on every one of our brand's career sites. And so candidates can leave their name, their email, their phone number um, to learn more about, you know, things that the brand has going on from an employment perspective or to be notified about specific jobs. And so it's great because then we have this database of all of this candidate information. And so from there, we can serve up relevant content through our candidate relationship management system, our CRM. So for instance, you know, our talent advisors can reach out to all of the candidates in a certain market, right? If they're looking to fill, um, say, management roles in a particular market, they can create, um, a, you know, a whole list of candidates to be able to quickly and, and um, easily send out automated messages that are templated, they're specific to the candidate, they're in-brand voice, um, you know, they can include a, a link to the rec or multiple recs. They can include team member testimonial videos or links to, you know, career blog pieces that we have available. They can include all of this information. And so it's a really great way, again, to make sure that you're communicating with your candidates, keeping them warm, building that pipeline. And I'm excited. So we're actually working on taking this to the next level um, by segmenting the candidates in our CRM based on where they are in the apply process. So we have even more specific targeted audiences. And so the content will be even more meaningful to them. And then I want to highlight quickly candidate experience, because obviously that plays a really big role in your employer brand. So over the last couple of years, we've been really intentional about providing um, the best possible candidate experience across all of our brands. We have um, outplacement for disposition candidates through candidate care. And this is important for us because our candidates are almost always also our customers, right? So through something like this, this gives us a shot at maintaining both consumer and employer brand loyalty. And then measuring candidate experience, it has been a big part of our process. So we installed a candidate net promoter score, a CNPS widget on all of our career sites. And this actually pops up and asks candidates to provide feedback on their experience. And so then in our analytics dashboard on the back end, we can look at all of the ratings, we can comb through the comments, and then we can take action accordingly. And then um, we've actually participated in the candidate experience awards, the candy awards um, for the past two years. And we are very excited to have been um, honored with a candy award both in 2020 and 2021. Um, but the, really the best part about that process is that now this year we have over 30,000 candidates worth of feedback that we can review and action plan against so that we can continue to improve the candidate experience. So, you know, obviously the objective of everything that I do that my team does, um, you know, the objective of our overarching strategy is to drive that applicant flow. And so, you know, you've got all of this coming in, but especially in today's environment, it is critical that you absolutely maximize every single application that you get. And so I'm going to kick it back to Brian. He's going to talk through some of the best practices um, before we wrap up and then dive into the Q&A. All right. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, so one one quick note on candidate experience and the uh, uh, the the information Kristen was just sharing. What we've gone through too now is obviously we're in a very different situation. And as we talk to marketing and we're building out uh, EVPs and things like that, like that's got to be very real, right? Um, so ensuring that what you're putting out there is going to be what they find in your 
support center, corporate environment, restaurant. Um, Cause right now it's it, within the, re- it's, it's crazy. Right. And, and we've got to, we've got to acknowledge that and in some ways embrace it. Um, you know, one of the ways that we're talking about doing that is, you know, with the amount of turnover and, and things like you, you want to get into the industry and you want to get promoted and become a manager. Now is your time, right? Uh, because there's plenty of opportunities and we're willing to train you and, and get you there. So finding that, that way to pivot your, your EVP, um, in what's a, a little bit of a, a difficult time. So just from a, a maximizing applicants, I wanna hustle through this because I do wanna get to a few of the questions here. Um, you know, Obviously time is of the essence when an application comes in these days, especially when you're in a, a retail or restaurant or hospitality environment, uh, people are getting, uh, getting called and hired within hours uh, versus days and weeks uh, right now. So as fast as you can get to people and as much flexibility as you can provide from an interview perspective. So on the spot interviews, uh, we do some open interview hours where uh, we advertise, you know, from from this time to this time on these days, just walk in and and we're ready to interview Uh, video interviews and and leveraging any video interviewing platforms. uh, Obviously, we're all on Zoom and everything else these days. So um, leveraging that uh, offers on the spot, especially in those hourly recruiting uh, scenarios. Um, and we're looking for ways to make sure that when they walk out and get an offer, uh, they're excited to come back. You know, we've, we've seen a huge rise in, in interview no-shows. We've seen a huge rise in no-shows on the first day or even second day. Uh, but we're, we're giving them their uniform. We're giving them some additional information. We're talking about the benefits and what you're going to get on your first day. Um, so they walk away with something, uh, knowing what they can expect and what they're going to get and setting those expectations. And then post hire, uh, make sure they know about the referral program uh, and champion that. Um, good people know good people, and they like to work with their friends. Um, sharing that career progression, like I just mentioned, and then recognize. Obviously, if we're not recognizing uh, the work, the effort, and and people coming to work, uh, especially in that that restaurant environment right now, uh, retention will be will be a huge issue. So, uh, finding ways to recognize as a as a way to to retain those people you work so hard to uh, to hire. So. Again, wanted to hustle through that because I know there's a few good questions that uh, that we wanted to get to, but let's move on to those. Perfect. Thank you, Brian and Kristen. So we did have some really great audience questions. We are starting with Christine here, and I'll let you go ahead and jump in and answer that. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things. Number one. Um, We've we continue to kind of ratchet up our, our referral bonus uh, as well as our um, sign on bonuses. So we, we really try to pump and promote that if you are uh, inside the building, there's still opportunities to make additional money from a uh, referral bonus perspective. We also prior to offering those sign on bonuses have done quite a bit of work on retention bonuses um, and increased pay, uh, whether that's increases in hourly rates or spot bonuses for people. Um, so that when they see others coming in and they see us advertising those sign on bonuses, it's it's not uh, a, a hit to that person and they're gonna go out and try to get a sign on bonus somewhere else, but we're recognizing and, and providing those those additional incentives to stay rather than, than go. Great, thanks, Brian. Okay, our next question is from Heather. Yeah, Heather, that's a great question. So it can vary by brand on how we recommend the appropriate recruitment marketing materials. But as far as on premise, typically we'll work with um, like our regional vice presidents. Uh, for each of the brands and we'll basically have like an open um, kind of an open enrollment window almost where we have all of our suite of tools available. The area supervisors can go in and select which of the pieces they wanna order for their their restaurants. And then that allows us with our printing vendor to get an idea of how many pieces of each material we wanna order, which helps us get more of a bulk discount. And then we'll force ship all of those to the locations. And typically we've worked with the organization ahead of time um, to make sure that these are budgeted in advance, knowing that we're probably about twice a year going to try and force ship out some of the materials to the restaurants. And another uh, piece of that, too, because we do have uh, franchisees that we support and, and instead of them going out on their own to to create their own materials, we do have. Uh, basically a, a 
uh, website and, and place that they can go to order their own. They can customize materials and things like that. So we're, we do kind of one approach on our corporate side of things and then another for our franchisees, but, but they can go in and, and print off or order uh, and have printed and shipped to try to ensure some, some consistency across the brand. So there's a couple of different approaches that we, uh, that we have to take there. All right. Thank you both. We are going to end this session. So Kristen and Brian will be in the employer brand room. Linda, is that right? Um, so they can answer additional questions if you have any follow-ups. And we'll also provide emails if you have questions specifically that you would like to ask. So we'll see you in the networking rounds and at our roundtables. And thank you again, Kristen and Brian, for a great presentation and so many wonderful ideas. It's wonderful having you. Thank you. Bye.